You're probably struggling to shoot in NBA 2K25. You can't seem to shoot past a certain percentage or even make a couple shots in a row. So now you have this build with all these shooting attributes and all these badges that you put a ton of EC into that you're stuck with. And you might see some players like myself wondering, how is he shooting like that? Well, today I got y'all. If you watch this video all the way through, I can guarantee you, you will become a better shooter in 2K25. So make sure to drop a like. And if by the end of the video, if you think you learned something new, make sure to hit that subscribe button. What is good, YouTube? It's your boy, Henry, aka Double H, back at it with yet another banger. And hey, we're going to be talking everything and going over everything shooting in 2K25, starting with one big tip and then going into where you should and shouldn't practice your jump shot tips and tricks, hot zones, visual cues, different timings, rhythm shooting, shot timing profiles, the best settings, shot feedback, literally everything you could possibly want to know to be the best possible shooter in 2K25. So starting off with one thing, well, actually two things I want to go over that not a lot of people are talking to you about is a lot of people are saying 2K25 shooting is harder than 2K24. And they're actually wrong about that. The green window is basically the same as 2K24. And let's go ahead and take a deeper dive into this. So if we take a look at my 2K card, I'm on a 6-6 point guard build. This is the only build I have in 2K25 right now. Got about a 95 win percent. I'm gold ranked in proving grounds. And I have a 57.3, three point percentage. Now I've been shooting a bunch of crazy like half court fadeaways and stuff for clips when I get takeover. So my three point percentage could be a little higher if I wasn't trolling. But if we take a look at this exact video I uploaded last year, the video I'm upload you're watching right now, I uploaded the exact one last year, a week after the game came out. And right now is about a week after the game came out. And if we take a look what I was shooting back then on a, also another 6'6 point guard with a similar three point rating, I was shooting 59%. So I am only shooting two less percent a week into the game on this basically the same build in 2k24 as i am in 2k25 and i am convinced that my shooting percentage will only rise and probably eventually get into the 60s and 70s like it did in 2k24 on my other builds in 2k25 and that's because i have mastered the shooting and i know exactly how this game works when it comes to the shooting and a lot of the things that i know have a lot to do with making your green window bigger or knowing what visual cue to look at knowing how to time your jump shot knowing what features to utilize in 2k25 when it comes to the shooting the settings all that stuff and we're gonna get into that into this video but let me explain something right quick that 99 percent of people don't understand a lot of you guys are struggling with the shooting in 2k25 because you think you time a jump shot correctly but you miss it and it's messing with your head when in reality you are timing a lot of jump shots correctly in 2k25 and they're not going in and the reason they're not going in is 2k is attempting notice how i said attempting to try to lower some of the top players three point percentages compared to other years to make the percentages more realistic but it's okay because i already figured out their system and how this worked now you will see some very rare screenshots of people going seven for seven for three and yes those that's possible to do is it something that you're going to do every game no there will be jump shots you time perfectly that the game does not allow you to make i like to call it rng shooting but there are ways around it and there are ways to have games where you do shoot seven for seven from three 2k basically is forcing us to play smarter basketball this year so if you want to shoot more consistently start your games with positive takeover a lot of you guys are shooting a three right off the rip maybe it's even a fadeaway two and you're missing it now you're playing a negative takeover maybe throw for an assist to start the game get a quick dunk or layup to start the game get an easy midi to start the game maybe hit your center go for a dex catch and shoot with full gatorade full stam shoot the three then you're in positive take for an easy jump shot not only that don't just shoot five threes in a row expecting things to be perfect you know get to that three point bag with maybe the button then maybe go for a quick layup or an assist then go for into that mid-range bag then maybe a dex off ball shoot with the rhythm shooting right stick feature the more you understand that you have to be more versatile in the types of shots you are taking and you have to be smarter on how you start your games in 2k25 the more you will be successful in shooting leading you to be more understanding of how this game works if you heard if you really heard and listened to what i said you got it if you didn't it went over your head forget about it or rewind anyways let's get into the details of all the shooting secrets in 2k25 
besides the biggest secret that I just told y'all. And if you don't think it is one of the biggest secrets, once again, there's not a lot of people that are shooting 55 to 60% plus in this game like I am. Now, before I could really get into the details, we have to first tell you guys where to practice your jump shot, okay? Now, I guarantee you 90% of you, maybe even higher, are probably practicing your jump shot here in the my court. And the thing is, yes, I could practice my jump shot here in the my court. And yes, if you know you're maybe you're learning no meter for the first time, or you're learning a new shot cue for the first time, or you're learning some kind of different setting that you usually don't have on for the first time, or maybe you just equipped a new jump shot and you're just trying to get a little feel for it, then yeah, maybe the My Court can be some use for you. And a lot of people like the My Court too because it does have this slider difficulty where you can you know, change it from the city slider difficulties, ranked, uh, rec, uh, rank 3v3, pro-am, whatever, okay? I would highly not recommend practicing in here unless though there are you know some small reasons why you could practice in here like i mentioned earlier but i would recommend not testing your jump or not practicing in here or warming up in here because there is not only is there zero latency in this my court this is basically an offline game mode right here and you guys know that it's a whole different world when you go online jump shots gonna feel different it might even look different it's just gonna be a whole different world right but number two that rng shooting thing that's built into the game it's not in the my court i've i've seen a lot of people that like to argue against this rng shooting thing being in the game um with you know screenshots of people going seven for seven yes that can happen that doesn't that doesn't mean the rng shooting's not in the game it, rng shooting may happen once every five shots it may happen once every 10 shots hey it might happen twice in three shots right but what i will say is it doesn't happen at all in the my court you can green 100 threes in a row in the my court and you're gonna think you're the best but in reality a lot of these shots that i'm shooting right here might not go in online so you're probably wondering okay so where should i practice my jump shot let me go ahead and show you so the best place to practice your jump shot if it's not going to be in game because obviously the best place is to practice actually in game when you're playing online against these players if you don't want to do that you could go to some of these garage courts that are like see this garage court right behind me if there's no one here and luckily right now there's no one here but usually there's people there uh but you could also go down here at these courts in the back there's also some courts over there there's also some gatorade courts over there or basically any court that's just like can be played online that has no one playing on it so you just hop on a got next spot just like this and you basically go into the warm-up you know thing and obviously you could already tell that there's just a lot more latency on in here so basically go practice your jump shot on courts that are able to be played online with that does not include those co-op courts it doesn't include the chris brickley gym it doesn't include uh lethal shooters gym don't go to the my court this is this is by far the best spots to practice your jump shot so once again this court right here this court right here even the gatorade court right next to it one of these random garage courts around the city or maybe this court right next to the racetrack and just so you're not lost the gatorade courts are right here the courts next to the racetrack there's one right here there's one right here and then there's like garage courts that are always have this little logo on them right here like maybe like the at t one or maybe the held hotels.com one over here literally just or it could be like a actual park court stage court that's just not being taken now it's time to go over some simple tips and tricks before we get into those settings and exactly how all those work now obviously there are boosts in this game now i know what a lot of you guys are thinking okay this is an obvious one but i don't want to spend my vc but i'm just saying you can't not you can't want to shoot the best you possibly can in this game and then also not ju buy jump shot boosts like they make a difference they make a clear difference i'm not going to be playing games on 2k without jump shot boost personally if you don't want to spend the vc then don't spend the vc now if you want to go even further buy this green thirst quencher gatorade this gets a little more expensive personally i don't always buy these and i even have a million vc right now and i still don't want to buy these sometimes i'm sure a lot of you probably don't want to buy them but hey extra stamina equals more stamina by the time you shoot the ball equals a higher chance of making the shot so those are the two best things that can just that you could directly buy with vc that can boost your shooting in 2k25 because obviously the jump shot boosts are just going to make you make jump shots more often and then the gatorade boost is going to give you an extra blue bar on your stamina 
So by the time you get open, like I said, you're going to have more stamina. Now we're going to talk about hot zone. So we go ahead and take a look at my 2K player card. I have two lethals. I have red hot zones around the entire three point line, the paint. And I don't have any of my hot zones yet in my mid range area because I haven't gotten to that yet. But you want to make sure you get your hot zones. Hot zones are super important. And if you don't know how to get your hot zones, I'm going to tell you right now. So before you head anywhere, even before you head into the art of shooting gym, the lethal shooter gym, you want to get your red zones. So if you don't have your red hot zones already, the places that you can grind these red hot zones at is either the dunes court right here, which is a street ball court. Go ahead and shoot from the exact hot zone you want to get every single shot for two straight games and you will get your hot zone if you shoot. I think it's like 50 or 60 percent or higher and those courts are on like rookie difficulties so just do a step back shoot a three and you should get it so that's one court you could do it on right there you could also go to this court right here called the temple and it's been the same thing it's a street ball court shoot from the exact hot zone you want your hot zone from for two straight games shoot a certain percentage or higher which i think it's 50 could be 60 if i'm wrong and you will get your red hot zone with that not only that you could also do this in my career which is going to be in your NBA arena right here. If you want to go play a micro game, just put it on rookie five minute quarters, shoot from the spots you want your red hot zones at, and you'll eventually get them. Now, if you do notice it with my hot zones, I do have some purple hot zones and the purple hot zones give you a much bigger boost than the red hot zones do. So you could have up to three of these purple zones at one time. And the way you get them is either a shoot from places that are already red zones in my career. You have to do it in my career. It's not going to work in those dunes courts. I don't think, and it's not going to work in those temples courts. I don't think I would do it in my career to be safe because that's where a lot of people are reporting. They can get them from. But if you want to get them super fast, all you have to do is go to this lethal gym. Once you get your red zones, now keep in mind, you can have these red zones wherever you want them. In reality, I could have every single zone, a red zone, just because, oh, if I even if I shoot this shot one time in 20 games, I'm going to have a red zone there and I'm going to have an advantage if you want to think like that. So, yeah, you just get red zones everywhere if you want. But these purple zones, you want where you shoot the most. So once again, you can go back to this shot chart and see where you're shooting the most so you can have bigger green windows and more success rate in those spots you're shooting the most. And that's where you're going to want to have your purple zones. Like I said, you can have up to three at most at a time and if you want to get them immediately you could go inside this lethal shooter gym and i already did this challenge but basically you're going to go up to lethal shooter he's going to have a mark on him and you're going to do either one of these three drills one where you get three lethals in for three weeks two where you get two lethals for two weeks and one where you get one for a week but before you go into that challenge make sure you go to your settings and put it on rookie i didn't do this i had it on hall of fame and I thought Lethal Shooter was the second coming of whatever, bro. I don't know. He couldn't miss. So I ended up just settling for two lethals. But I still could get my third lethal in my career if I wanted to. But yeah, if you're going to go ahead and do the Lethal Shooter way of getting these purple zones, make sure you are on rookie difficulty. So once again, you can either... So once again, get your red zones in my career, the dunes, or the temple. Then get your purple zones in either my career or the Lethal Shooter gym. Now it's time to go over the settings. Now the settings are actually the most important part besides like maybe jump the actual jump shot you're using we'll talk about that later as well but there's no really settings in the actual regular settings settings menu so don't even go there go immediately to your controller settings and there's gonna be a couple things to look at right there's gonna be the shot timing profile the layup timing profile the free throw timing and then of course the shot timing visual cue so the first thing we're going to go over is the layup timing profile because it's just one that really doesn't have to do with shooting but a lot of people are complaining oh i'm missing wide open layups in 2k25 what's wrong it's probably because you're on high risk reward layup timing put this to low risk if you don't want to time your layups maybe even put it to real player percentage if you want layup timing off me personally i had it at high risk and i was making a lot of red layups but there were also some layups that I was missing because I just wasn't ready to time the layups. So now I've been messing around with real player percentages. Just test out each setting and I'm kind of liking the real player percentage setting right now. Now, free throw timing. I mean, you either just have this on user timing or you let the computer time it. I would put on user timing. Why would you let the computer decide whether you're going to miss or make it? Now let's talk about the shot timing profile. This is a new setting in 2K25 for the first time ever. 
and you can have it either on low risk or you can have it on difficulty based real player percentage low risk normal risk or high risk reward so difficulty based is letting the computer let you you know make you miss or make it depending on the difficulty so if you're in my city it's gonna be a little easier if you're in the wreck it's gonna be the easiest if it's gonna be improving rounds that's where the difficulty is the hardest if it's in the stage you know it's the second hardest pro-am pretty hard as well so i would just avoid this setting completely because no matter what you do with this setting what kind of shots you take with this setting you are going to shoot a lower percentage than you could if you do well with actually user timing it same with real player percentage do not use this setting same with low risk reward i have played plenty of players in the park that have tried to use this low risk reward thing and I purposely leave them wide open. Now it does let you make whites, okay? But that's just clickbait, bro. Like they're trying to pull you in. Oh, you can make whites, but your green window is super small. So, okay. So you're, it's basically real player percentage, but you can, you're, you're timing it though. Like if that makes sense, they get, you're basically saying, okay, it's up to the game to decide if I make this white and more likely than not, I'm not going to make the white, but I am going to make some whites. And then my green window is going to be super small. And what ends up happening is every time I play someone with low risk reward and I see them make a white, I'm like, okay, leave them open. Cause I know usually the players that do try to mess with this setting are not very good players. And the green window is super small in this setting so if you're not a good player the green window is super small guess what you're not going to be making a lot of shots so i would avoid that setting as well normal risk reward is a little in the middle the green window is not too small it's like right in the middle and you can make whites you're not going to make a lot of whites but you can make whites and honestly i would recommend messing around with this setting i have had some teammates that have messed around with this and they've personally told me i don't notice a difference with the green window change but i do make whites every now and then it's not often but i do make them every now and then so i would test this out if you are frustrated with using high risk reward now the setting i would recommend the most is of course high risk reward this is the setting i use for the biggest green window and if you're playing pro-am stage or proving rounds it automatically makes you shoot on high risk so if you even think about playing in one of those modes you may as well get used to this setting in the other modes because you're going to be forced to be on it when you enter those modes. Now, you're not forced to use the layup one for whatever reason, but you are for forced to use the shot timing one. So yeah, you're not going to make any whites with high risk reward. You're not going to make any whites, but your green window is going to be the biggest out of all of these settings. So once again, I would recommend high risk. Maybe you could test out normal risk and I would highly recommend completely avoiding all three of these settings right here and even if you have you th even if you think you like one of these settings or oh i've had success with this setting i mean i don't know why you're clicking on the how to shoot video if you've had success with it but if you're saying that well guess what you're going to be even better with high risk or normal risk i'm telling you right now and then next we have shot timing visual cue now this is going to be very important and we're going to go over this in a second once we finish up with the rest of these settings because this one is that important so if we go over to animations and then we go over to customize hud on the top right this is where you can take your shot meter off this is where you can adjust your shot feedback so a couple things i would 100 do is make sure your visibility is on for all shots make sure your shot meter visibility is off as well this is going to give you a bigger green window on top of that high risk reward shooting you obviously you want to make your green window as big as possible and this is going to add on to it now if you are still shooting with shot meter in 2k25 and you are watching this video right now please take it off take it off i cannot believe there are some people that play 2k that actually look at their meter to time their shot now if you have a shot meter on and you're not looking at your meter to time your shot then you just have it on for no reason take it off you're gonna get a bonus but if you are you need to take it off bro a lot of the times the shot meter is actually not really showing you when to time your shot due to latency or what if you're playing on a monitor or a tv or even just your because your internet or even just the game the game does not keep up very well to show you when to time your shot meter but not only that there's a lot better ways like these visual cues that i'm going to talk about to know when to time your jump shot based off what kind of catch you get or whether you have low stam low adrenaline or where you get the ball on the court whether it's a fade a standing shot a last second shot whatever there's a better ways to know when the time or jump shot and i'm going to teach you how to do it in this video so just trust me take the training wheels off the bike take the shot meter off 
and I will teach you how to shoot without the meter and you will eventually get good with it and you will be a lot better player with it off in the long run. So take that off. Um, you know, you could adjust with a bunch of other of these settings, shot feedback, make the vis visibility on all shots. Basically, it's going to tell you, you know, whether your shots are open, contested, lightly contested. So it's slightly late, slightly early green. You want to make sure that's on because if it's not on and you miss a jump shot, how the heck are you going to know if it was slightly early or slightly late and how to adjust on the next shot, right? So make sure that's on. Now, if you do want automatic greens, like greens immediately, like instant greens, like 2K20, you could put it on simple and you can get a green immediately, but you won't see if it was how contested the jump shot was. So I would recommend going all shots so you could see how contested it was. But hey, maybe you don't want as much information after a jump shot and you just want to look cool, put it on simple. Personally, I don't care about that. I want more information on how open or contested my jump shot was. So I'm going to go old shot. So yeah, you could also adjust a bunch of other little things here, but that's how you take off your meter. Now, going back to these controller settings, when it comes to the uh, shot timing visual cue, this is going to be it's basically a setting to know when to release your button or your stick. And we will talk about which one you should use and which one's going to give more bonus in 2K25 later in the video. Jump set point push and release is when you should be timing your jump shot with X or stick based on what you're looking at. So this is huge if you don't have a shot meter on, on because you need to be looking at your my player's body. Do not shoot off muscle memory. Do not do that because you are going to get the ball on different spots in the court where the timing is going to change. You're going to get the ball with low energy or low stamina. Your timing is going to change. You're going to be shooting a fade or a standstill. The timing is going to change. Timing is going to change when you're in takeover. Your jump shot timing is going to change based off a bunch of different variables so if you're not looking at your my player and you're going off just muscle memory, you're bound to miss shots in 2K25 and a good amount of them. You want to shoot based off looking at your my player and depending on what setting you want have on here, I'm going to teach you what you need to be looking at and which settings right here are the best ones to use. And yeah, we'll get into that. But anyways, let's start with jump. So here is a video of me shooting with jump. Well, I'm not actually shooting with jump, but I'm going to tell you when you would release it based off a shooting clip. Um, so yeah, so Guess what? Guess when you're going to release your button or stick with jump? Yep. When you jump. Okay. So yeah, I know it's crazy, right? But yeah. So as soon as your my player jumps off the ground to shoot the jump shot, that's when you release X in the stick. Now, yeah, you're probably thinking, well, okay, why would I do that? I have such little time to re read and react to what kind of animation I'm getting. Yeah, I agree. That's why I wouldn't recommend jump no matter what you're using. And guess what? You could sit here and argue with me and be like, oh, but I'm doing good with jump. Guess what? You would be doing better with one of the other ones I'm about to talk to you about. So yeah, that's when you would time jump. It's literally right as you're jumping off the ground. Getting into set point. So set point is another one that I also wouldn't recommend, but set point is going to be right at this point in the jump shot where your player is kind of like in that set motion. So you know, if you ever got taught how to shoot um, when you if playing basketball growing up, it would be knee, elbow, extend, right? So right where he's right where your player gets locked into that knee elbow position into shooting so before he even starts flicking or doing any of that right where he gets locked into that knee elbow position is when you would release the ball on set point so yeah that's when you would release it i also wouldn't recommend that because once again you're not being given enough time or as much time to read and react to what animation you're getting to time the jump shot now push is the next setting this is the setting i use and this is the setting I would recommend for anybody that is six, six, or actually no, six, five or taller. I don't care if you're seven, three. I don't care if you're six, five. I don't care if you're six, nine. This is the shooting setting I would recommend is push. Now, when do you time push? You're going to time it right here. So right when your player is pushing the ball out of his hands in the release, that's when you're going to time push. So as soon as he starts pushing the ball out of his hand, out of his pocket, out of his shooting pocket, that is when you time push with either your X button or your stick or your square button if you're on PlayStation. Now going to release, this is the setting I would recommend if you're five nine to six four, okay? Because if you guys didn't know, five nine to six fours, their shots are a lot faster than all the other heights in the game. So you want the most amount of time possible to read and react to the animation you're getting with these jump shots because they're going to be faster at these heights. You know, the shorter you go in this game, the faster your jump shot's going to be. 
so i would go release and release is going to be when you time it right there yes right when you release the ball so as soon as your player completes that flick animation when he after he releases the ball that is when you're going to time the jump shot on release so hopefully that helped you out once again push if you're six five to seven three and release if you're five nine to six four hey and if you don't want to listen to me and you just want to be stubborn and you think that whatever setting you got on right now is better go ahead and do it but i'm telling you right now scientifically you will be better with push or release on those heights as long as you just adjust to it you literally will be better now another thing we need to go is back to the animations and back to your jump shot and actually yeah i'm gonna show you guys my jump shot right here this is my jump shot for a six five to six nine now you can you know manually mess with this meter to jump set point push release um personally i haven't gone in the middle it's kind of just a weird like, setting to mess with you can mess with it i have mine right on push because i'm used to that from last year and i know exactly where to time it i think once you get into this middle zone it's kind of like just a guessing game of when to time it almost so i really wouldn't do that i wouldn't really mess around with that too much but no matter what jump shot you have on i would recommend just going on to push or release based off your height um but i would always max the release speed the reason you never want to have full release speed is because the lower you go guess what the more time the defender has to close out to you or get a better contest so you may as well max the release speed we're already kind of using this visual cue setting to our advantage knowing that we have a fast max release speed jump shot so you don't need to lower this because oh, i want more time to time my jump shot no you're using this setting to give you more time so make sure your release speed is maxed out your animation blending doesn't really matter it's just whatever your your jump shot entails right now if you go if now if you guys do want the best jump shot for your build i'm going to pop up the video on the screen right now i posted a video for the best jump shot for all three point ratings and builds in 2k25 go check it out i'm not going to include all those jump shots in that video or in this video i'll just show mine which is this one right here but yeah if you have a different build different three point rating go check out that video it has all three point ratings jump shots you could possibly want to get 25 now it is time to go over rhythm shooting now i would show you guys in this in the my court but i feel like it's just best to practice where you should be practicing at and that is at these you know online courts like i talked about earlier so rhythm shooting is actually a new setting in 2k25 really isn't in the settings and it's probably something you wouldn't even know about unless you saw like a 2k25 news video or you saw my video or maybe someone else's video about rhythm shooting now rhythm shooting i could pop up some clips on the screen i have actually been using rhythm shooting a lot rhythm shooting is something that i'm not going to sit here and recommend you be like yeah guys you should use rhythm shooting and i'm not even using it like i actually use rhythm shooting in 2k25 and if you guys don't know what rhythm shooting is it's basically not the traditional traditional way to shoot it's a new way to shoot in 2k25 and you're probably like oh well i've shot with this stick before in other 2ks where it's giving you a boost yeah that has been a thing but the rhythm shooting is a different way to do it with the stick so basically if i'm about to shoot the ball right here instead of shooting with a button i can hold down on the right stick and then flick up when i'm supposed to release it so i'm on push timing like we talked about earlier push i'm gonna go down and right there it didn't count as rhythm shooting shot it's like a that's like a bug it happens like one out of every 20 rhythm shooting shots but i go down up when i'm pushing it just because i'm on the push setting and you see there's a push timing and a tempo timing so you actually have to double green these shots you have to do you have to time two different things in one jump shot to make it on high risk reward and you're probably wondering okay with double h why the heck would i time two different timings on one jump shot when i can time one with the button just like that right well the answer is the rhythm shooting gives you a bigger green window so we talked about no meter gives you a bigger green window high risk reward gives you a bigger green window and guess what rhythm shooting also gives you a bigger green window and mike wayne the director of the gameplay for 2k has even confirmed that the green the the boost you get for rhythm shooting is way larger than anything else that could increase your green window in 2k25 so let me explain exactly what these two timings mean and exactly how to use rhythm shooting for all types of shots so once again stand still shot right here once again do not use well you could use right trigger on standstills but we'll talk about fades in a second but anyways right stick down flick up when you're supposed to time it now i grained it right there there was a push timing there's a tempo timing push timing is telling you if you released it correctly by by the last flick so the up flick is the push timing so if i flicked up on the stick the right stick 
correctly when I'm supposed to release it, which is push. I'm on push. So I'm supposed to flick that right stick as soon as my player's pushing the ball, then I know that I timed it right. So that push timing, I flicked. I didn't flick the right stick at the right time on my push timing right there. So I did it late. So I need to flick up on the right stick a little earlier for my push timing just like that. Now there's also tempo timing. All right, so let me try to explain this tempo timing for you guys because a lot of people are super confused on it. They're all saying double age, double age. If, if I'm timing the push timing correctly, then how the heck is my tempo timing not excellent, right? So let me explain this. So let's look at your right stick for a second. So if we have a right stick on the screen, let's say point A is when we have the right stick down and point B is when we flick the right stick up, okay? So tempo timing is how fast or slow you go from point A to point B. And then obviously, like I said earlier, the push timing is when you flick that right stick, right? So if you're on push, jump, release, set point, you push it up when you get to that visual cue point. So with the tempo timing, you could get a slightly fast, a very fast. And basically, if you're mistiming the tempo, you know, in some cases, you might release the right stick from the bottom too fast. So then you're releasing from point A too fast, but you're still getting to point B at the right time. But this would just mean going from point A when you release that right stick from the bottom, going to point B when you flick up on the right stick, it just was a longer period of time between those two points than it should have been because you released the right stick from the bottom too quickly or vice versa. Maybe you were holding on to the right stick too fast and you still timed the up on the right stick correctly because you got to the, you flicked to the right stick at the right time up, but you're holding down on the right stick for too long. So that time it took you to go from flicking down on the right stick point A to flicking up on the right stick point B, it was just super fast because you were holding on to the right stick down for too long. And once you start shooting more with rhythm shooting, the more and more you do, the more you'll understand that it's kind of just this fluid motion where it's the same speed of going down to the right, down on the right stick, up on the right stick every single time, as long as you're pushing up on the right stick where you're supposed to for that visual cue. And you're going to green a lot more shots using this, but you're probably wondering, okay, what if I want to fade with this? Well, if you want to fade with this, let's say I run over to the left and do this and I let go of my right trigger, I'm going to get a fade, right? I'm going to get a clean fade, but it's a fade without the right trigger. So if you do want to shoot with this on a fade, just a regular fade like this, you have to let go of the right trigger or you're going to get something like that, which is a hop jumper. Now, if you have a good hop jumper on, it could be useful. But once again, if you want to fade without a hop jumper, run to the left or right, let go of the right trigger, then go into your rhythm shooting, right? So I missed time right there. Over to the left, fluid motion, bang. Now you're not gonna get like that super fast fade animation that you would get if you were shooting with X. Like, look, if I just run with the right trigger, you're not gonna get that animation with rhythm shooting. There's no way to get that animation. So if you do wanna run and fade with the right trigger, you're gonna get a hop jumper. So if you go down with the right stick, up on the right stick, I completely mistimed that by the way. Um, you're gonna get a hop jumper. So if you have a good hop jumper on like I do, which is normal too, you're gonna get this hop animation where you hop out and then you could shoot it with the rhythm shooting. Now, once again, you can see for that gameplay clips, I am grinning a lot of crazy shots with this and it is going to be a big adjustment. You're gonna have a lot bigger green window. I would suggest you guys messing around with it. And yes, for my guards out there, like if you see me dribbling right here and then we go into the right stick shot, it is a little awkward to get used to the rhythm shooting when you are dribbling and then all of a sudden you have to stop and then after you know messing around with the right stick while dribbling now you have to get into this right stick shooting it is a little awkward it's something to get used to for sure but i will say if you're a lockdown if you're a spot up if you're a center this is a must use you may not want to use this if you're a guard but if you're a spot up player you're shooting catch and shoots for a lot of your shots you have to learn how to use this there's no if ands and buts you gotta learn how to use this because the difference I have seen with playing with a, a spot up teammate that is using rhythm shooting and isn't using rhythm shooting is night and day. My center teammates that don't use it are 50, bro. They miss a lot of their jump shots. My center teammates that do use it, I mean, God damn, they do not be missing, bro. They are, I pass to them more because I know they're gonna make their shot and I'm a lot more confident in them. And not. And the biggest reason I tell you that Obviously, you're gonna shoot better with the rhythm shooting if you're, you know, if you, if you master it. But it's so easy to rhythm shoot 
off the catch. It's so easy to do stand still. It's the hard part of rhythm shooting is dribbling, then stopping on a dime, then rhythm shooting. No, that's the hard part. The easy part is catch and shoot, rhythm shot. So as a guard, sometimes I won't rhythm shoot after I dribble. I'll always rhythm shoot off a catch and shoot, or maybe I'm doing like a simple dribble move that's really easy to rhythm shoot. Out of. One of them is the Dev is the Zach Levine step back. So by Zach Levine step back like this, I can immediately go into a rhythm shot because it gives me a lot of time to think about that rhythm shot. Now, one thing I will say is sometimes if you do catch the ball with rhythm shooting, it doesn't let you shoot immediately. And then flicking up, like right there, it took so long for my player to register that I'm rhythm shooting. But I don't know, sometimes it, I feel like it's just the game. The game doesn't register that you have the right stick down and that you're trying to rhythm shoot. And so sometimes it takes a second, like right there, like I was already holding, it took, it took the game like a half a second to register that I was rhythm shooting. So that's one downside of it. The second downside of it is that like once every like 15 or 20 rhythm shots, the game thinks you're just shooting with down on the right stick and it doesn't think you're using rhythm shooting. So it'll just think you're, you only went down on the right stick and it won't read that you went down up. So you'll just miss the shot because it didn't count as a rhythm shooting shot. So there's two downsides of rhythm shooting, but if you master rhythm shooting, you're going to have a bigger green window and you are going to shoot a lot better in 2K25. Do I rhythm shoot every single jump shot? No, unless I'm on the ones court. On the ones court, I do rhythm shoot every jump shot. I do like to rhythm shoot every catch and shoot and I do like to rhythm shoot off certain dribble moves because I just have a huge advantage in doing it. Hopefully y'all learned some new things from watching this how to shoot video. Make sure to check out the jump shots video if you guys still don't have a jump shot. Drop a link on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. It's been your boy Henry, aka Double H, and I'm out of here, y'all. Peace.